everybody, it's Claire here. How are you all? Hope you're all keeping okay and um, adjusting to our new socially isolated or socially distant life that we're living at the minute. Um, so I hope you're all keeping okay. We're going to try and do as much as we can to support you in terms of giving you um, resources and content for you to be able to keep exercising at home. Um, what I'm going to show you now is some of the exercises that we have provided with the 14 day challenge. Um, you'll have done most or all of these exercises before, but I'm going to take you through um, each of them now, just to give you a refresher, um, or for anybody that's new to us, just so you know um, what we're doing. Most of them, as I said, you've done before, they are able to be done at home with little to no equipment. I will be improvising with a few things that we can find around the house. If you can find anything um, more innovative or exciting, then please let me know, but this is what I'm going to use for now. Um, so the first exercise that we're going to do is um, our jumping jacks. Um, you'll have done these before in class. So I'm just going to show you two versions of them. So the first one, if you want to keep it down, um, keep it down low. Um, I'm not doing much of um, intensity. Then you just literally take one arm and one leg to the side. Okay, and if you want to take it up a bit, it's just arms and legs at the same time. Okay, so that's the first one. The second exercise we're going to do is bicep curls. Um, for anybody that has been coming to our classes, we'll know that we have these in our classes most most times. Um, and we'll use little dumbbell weights for this exercise. But for anybody that doesn't have them, which probably will be loads of people, we can just go to your cupboard um, and get some tin fr food or fruit. So I'm going to use just tin pears. Um, so what we'll do is just hip legs, just hip, just hip width apart, knees slightly bent, and we are just using the tin pears as our weights. And we're just going up and down. You can do one at a time. Or you can do both at the same time. If you can find anything that's heavier in the cupboards then by all means or you can just do it without the weights you simply are clenching your fists. So either one at a time or in both. Just make sure that your forearm, your arm is stuck to the side of your chest. So the next exercise is calf raises um, and these are quite straightforward to do. So if you really want to just come up onto the balls of your feet, just ever so slightly and take your time. If you need something to hold on to for a bit of balance, you just put your hand to the wall and that will help keep you balanced and keep you upright. You should feel the burn after a few of those. Um, okay, the next exercise then is a press up. Um, there are a couple of different versions of these. I'm going to show you the most simplified version and I suppose the, the modified version for anybody who um, is still in treatment or perhaps has a pick line in um, or any sort of line in their chest, has their core or their arms are compromised. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do this against the wall. So you just have your feet sort of just hip width apart, arms just a little bit wider than shoulder width width. And everything's kept nice and straight and you're just bending your arms and your nose is going towards the wall. Okay, so the only thing really you should be bending is your elbows as you are pushing into the wall. Okay, for anybody that's able to get on the ground, you just want to come into all fours like this. And if you want to just stay on your knees, you can. Just make sure that your, your belly button is being sucked up towards your back so that everything's keeping nice and tight. And all you're doing really I is just bending the arms and again, your nose is going towards the floor. You can do it with your feet crossed and leg feet off the floor. So you just want to make sure that your elbows are going out the way. 
and that you're not coming down like this. So if you want to spread your fingers for a wee bit more stability. And anybody that feels like they can do a food press up, you're coming up onto your toes and you're just going down. So you want to keep everything fixed. Your core, your back, your bum. Okay. Okay, so the next exercise is squats. And we want to make sure that our feet are more than hip width apart, toes facing forward. And all we're doing really is we're just bending down like that. So you want to keep your bum pointing out the way on the way down and squeeze your bum in on the way back up again. So you, whatever you feel comfortable with your arms. But just make sure that your knees aren't coming above your toes. Or you can keep your arms out. So squeeze your bum in on the way back up again. You don't, it doesn't matter how far down you can get. You might want to just try going down ever so slightly first of all, if you're not used to these. And then as over time, you want to try and get a little bit deeper. Okay, so that's a squat. Okay, so the next exercise is a chest press. Um, anybody that's been to our classes will know that we use weights and uh, we're the, the, the weight of balls for this um, exercise. But I'm going to go back to my old Tim Purse. Um, and again, if you have anything else that you think would be a little bit heavier or an alternative for a weight, then you can use that. So with the chest press, again, knees just slightly bent and your arms are bent and you're just going out and up, out and up. So this will count as one, so up and out is one, up and out is two. If you have um, a pick line in, you might just want to just do this, going out the, out the way instead of up. So that applies to anybody. If you feel any pressure or any pain when your arms are going above your head, then just don't do that exercise. Just do it like this instead. The next exercise is a shuttle walk or a shuttle run. Um, or if you're like me and you're kind of restricted for space, then you can just march on the spot. So if you have room in your, your hallway or your back garden, you can set out um, two cones, either end of the hallway or either end of the garden. Um, and a shuttle is just running up and down. That would be one, up and down is two. But I said, if you're like me and you're a wee bit stuck for space, then you can just jog on the spot. If you want to take it up a bit, you can bring your knees up higher or just bring it down to a gentle march so we can jog high knees or just a march our next exercise are our lunges and um, we think we've done these in all of our classes and um, if your balance is a little bit off you might want to just take aside a wall or something that will hold you up just um, for a wee bit of safety to know that your balance is there so a lunge is literally just bringing one leg forward, one leg behind, the back leg, the heel of the back leg stays off the ground and both knees bend down. So as you bring one leg forward, you're bending the back leg. So both knees are bending. You don't want your back knee to go to the floor. And you want to make sure where possible this front knee is bending in front of the toe. Okay, so just okay, so that's our last exercise is our seated wall or our sit to stand. So we're using the chair for the sit to stand as this is the easier option. Make sure that the chair is against the wall. So it's not going to be a good object. So the seat, sit to stand, 
you're literally just coming down to the edge of the chair and back up again. So it's a bit like the squat that we were doing only we'll have to support under our bum. So you don't want to sit right back in the chair, you just want to come up to the edge. And for those that are able to do the lovely seated wall, you are just, your back is against the wall. And it's as if you're sitting in the chair, but the chair's not there. And you're holding this position fixed, keeping the core engaged, belly button to spine, and don't forget to breathe. So that is our seated wall. So if you haven't done the seated wall before, if you just stick to the sit to stand for the meantime, and then as the weeks go on, if you feel like you want to try the seated wall, even if it's just for five or ten seconds, then you can try it before you do it properly. So then we're moving on to our elbow to knee exercise. And again, we've used these in our classes before. This is a good bit of coordination um, for your mind as well um, as for your body. So we're literally just bringing our opposite elbow to meet our opposite knee. So you want to make sure that your elbow and your knee are meeting somewhere just a bit above your belly button. So opposite elbow, opposite knee. If you find that you want to travel a bit harder, you can take your elbows behind your head and you can just bring them. But just with this one, just make sure that you're not bending over. That your, your, your elbow is coming up to meet your knee and that your back is staying as straight as possible. Or you can just keep this one. So our next one then is our lateral raises. So if anybody's been coming to our classes, you'll know that this is the exercise with the stretchy bands that you lift up. Um, you stand on the band and you lift up with the handles to here. For this, we're just going to go back to our tins. If you have a resistance band or um, anything that's a bit of stretch in it, within reason that you're not going to injure yourself, you could try it. But we'll just use um, our cans for now. So what we're going to do is just make sure that our knees are slightly bent and then everything's fixed and engaged in our core. And we're just lifting our arms like we with a stretchy band. But we'll have that extra wee bit of weight just with the tins or anything heavier that you might be able to find. If you find that this is exercise is sore, do it this way, um, or there's a wee bit of resistance or restriction in movement, you can just bring your arms out to the front. So it's, you're, holding, you're still holding the cans the same way. Your arms are just coming out, and we're not going up any higher than our shoulders. Just make sure that our shoulders are staying down, and they're not coming up. So the shoulders are nice and relaxed and down. Or right to the side for your lateral raises. Again, we don't want to go any higher than our shoulders, in line, in line with our shoulders. But if you find that that's too much, just take it to where you can. If anybody you know, is coming to the classes and do, does use the, extra, the bands for the lateral raises exercise, you'll know yourself where you can get to. And you don't want to go any higher than that. And you definitely don't want to go any higher than your shoulders. Next exercise is the plank. Everybody loves the plank. Um, and again, there's another, there's a modified version of this for anybody whose core or anything is compromised or they can't get on off the floor. So the plank against the wall, something similar to the stance of your press up, but you're just bending the elbows ever so slightly and holding that position. So you can put your forearms on the wall, or you can just keep your arms like this. The plank then on the floor. If you come on to your toes, you can stay in this position. You want to make sure that your back is nice and straight and that you're not arched. Like a bridge, but you're nice and straight. Or you can come down onto your forearms. If you're feeling 
strong and steady and have been doing this for a while, you might want to just make it a little bit harder. You lift in one foot off the ground. And we have our upright row exercise and again you'll know this from in our classes and we have the, the bar with the weights on the end that we use for the upright row. I'm just improvising with the shaft of the, the mop. You can use the shaft of the hoover or if you have weights or something that's weighted you can use it but just for now I'm just using this. So we're holding the, the mop handle, the brush handle, the hoover, whatever it is like this. Our, our thumbs are touching and we're bringing the pole up to below our chin. So elbows are going out and we're not going any higher on our chin. So again, just make sure everything is fixed and engaged in your core, your bum. And the only thing that's moving is your elbows. So down, up. So the last one is our mountain climbers. Um, again, similar position, starting position to the plank or the press up. Um, but and again, we'll have a, a modified version against the wall. So we'll do the one against the wall first. So we're just standing like we would for the plank or the press up. And we're just lifting one knee up and then the other. So that is it. The modified version and then the actual version is if you get into your press up or plank position again everything's fixed and you're just bringing one knee in and then the other if you want to make it a little bit harder you can just quicken your pace just bring your knees or you can bring one knee across to the opposite hand. But just make sure that you're not bending up the waist, that everything's fixed, straight and engaged. So that's all 14 exercises done for you. Um, you can use all 14 or you can add your own in. You can start off by doing that 14 day challenge which we have sent around. Um, and then as time goes on, so after the first two weeks, you can do that again or you can um, do your own for the next two weeks. If you want to progress the exercises, you can add the number of reps that you do. Um, so you could do more um, than 10, 15 or 20. Um, or you can add in another exercise. So instead of doing four at a time, you do five or six. If you want to take it back a wee bit, you can just um, limit the number of reps that you do. So just do less reps. Um, and maybe only do two exercises instead of four. This is just something, as I said, to keep you going and give you something to do that is similar to what we do in our classes so that you do feel that you're still able um, to do a wee bit that at least that you know of anyway. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to follow along with them. Give us a shout if you need any help or if you have any suggestions that you want us to do within reason. Um, feel free to, to either write into our group chat or you can text us. Um, privately but everybody stay safe stay well um, and we'll see you in person once this situation is all over however long that is but for the meantime keep keep in touch we'll try and keep the content um, updated and there's always our move more and our youtube page and um, facebook and twitter where you'll get more and um, different things there's like dance there's pilates or yoga and um, chair based exercises so there will be an, an awful lot um, to keep you going but as i said give us a shout if you need anything or if you have any suggestions, then feel free to send them our way. See you soon.